Good morning, genealogy friends. Happy Friday. Um, so a while back on Friday, I was trying to share outside resources to share tools or websites, things that you maybe hadn't heard of. And I want to get back to that because there's a lot of websites and archives and record repositories out there that I think people don't necessarily know about, or maybe they know about them, but they don't know what they have in them. You know, places like the Library of Congress or the New York Public Library or um, the Ellis Island Foundation, things like that. So when I was putting my schedule together for what I wanted to talk to you guys about on Facebook, I tried to, I have this giant list of things that I wanted to share and I tried to keep Friday the day that I'm going to um, talk about those outside resources. So I'm really excited about that. The funny thing is I'm doing that today, but I'm also kind of not because I feel like everybody's going to have heard about the big four, the big four being ancestry, family search, find my past and my heritage. And I almost skipped this topic. So I thought, well, I don't even know that I can teach anybody anything, but I thought, you know, I want to do an overview of the comparison. Like what's the difference? Cause when I first got into genealogy, you know, seriously got into genealogy, I do think that I had a misconception about what each of these sites offered. And because of that, I was really lopsided for a little while. Um, and it also felt like before I talked about any other record repository, I had to mention the big four. So this is partly to quote unquote, get it out of the way, but also if you are somebody who only uses one or two of these sites, then um, there are things that you're missing. So I wanted to talk about that um, and to sort of address some of the challenges with using all four um, and what is happening with the four sites. Where, where are they putting their time and money to grow, things like that. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Flip this around. Good morning. I got my hoodie on today, my gigantic, gigantic hoodie. Um, so, you know, especially when you're first getting into genealogy, it's hard because, um, like any other hobby, hobby probably, genealogy can seem really expensive up front. Like suddenly you have to buy all of these supplies to make an album. You have to get a nice photo printer. Maybe you've got to get a nice computer or an iPad. I know that there's quite a few of you that I've talked into buying an iPad, which I really, and that's the thing, I have full confidence that that's been a good decision. It's just, I am, I'm loath to suggest that if you want to do genealogy, you first have to drop a thousand dollars on an iPad, even though it will be life changing. Um, but one of the, you know, the first hangups might be that you go to one of the big genealogy sites, the big four, and you see that there's a membership cost and that it's not, you can't even just pay once and then have access that you have to, you know, have a subscription. And I think that that is a, um, a deterrent for a lot of people, which is too bad because there are definitely ways to do genealogy um, and not have it be a financial hardship. But the money thing being an issue, I think also means that when people are looking at ways that they can be frugal and save money, then they are going to at most pick one of the big four. Well, one of the big four being free. So maybe one of the other three to invest their money in and they're not gonna have subscriptions everywhere. That I also completely understand if you aren't swimming around in you know genealogical funds, then it can be hard to have three different subscriptions. And I will tell you right up front, I do not currently have active subscriptions to all of these sites. So I am in that same boat. Part of mine also is that I have, a, it seems like I've got seasons in my genealogy life where I'm doing a lot of research and then that's sort of interrupted by times when like right now I'm not doing a lot of research because I'm doing a lot with my business. And when I am doing my own work, I'm doing things like scanning photos here at home or writing up, you know, pieces of research that I've been collecting and things. And because I have gotten to the rhythm of doing it that way, it doesn't make sense for me to have active subscriptions all the time, um, which can be a way to save money. It's sort of like having a gym membership. If you aren't going to be using it for the next six months, then you don't really want to pay for it because then your mind, then you'll be mad at the gym. And I would never want you to be mad at one of these sites because you feel like they're ripping you off when it's really that you're not showing up to take advantage of um, what they're offering. So 
don't rush out today and get subscriptions to all three of these if you're not sure what you need because I don't want you to be mad at them or at me if you just don't have time to, in, to dig in. But I also would strongly say don't ignore. Uh, just because you have one doesn't mean that you don't have to look at the other three. So let's talk about that. Okay, so I'm going to start with Ancestry.com because that's what I started with. Uh, I don't know that that's the one that everybody starts with, but Ancestry has certainly become very popular. They have done a whole lot of marketing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, lots of commercials. Lots of people think of Ancestry when they think of getting into their family history. You know, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab an Ancestry.com subscription, or I think this is very common. I was going to do my genealogy, and then I went to Ancestry.com and realized I didn't have a hundred, two hundred dollars. Um, for the membership. So Ancestry is kind of expensive and there's different membership levels, which I think also frustrates people because if you want, you know, I wouldn't want to call it like the good Ancestry because there's a lot you can do with just the more basic membership, but it can be frustrating when you're paying for um, a subscription and you keep running into records that you can't see because you need to upgrade. Uh, Newspapers.com, I'm looking at you. Um, Newspapers.com, of course, being part of the Ancestry.com family. I currently have the subscription to Newspapers.com that's just under the full, I can't remember what they call it, unlimited, giant, the subscription that basically means, hey, every newspaper that you're looking for, yeah, it's in this category. And so I do hit that, oh, you, you wish you could see this, but you can't see it right now. And what I've done is I honestly just save all of those links onto a big research document that I have running on my computer because newspapers.com does open up for free access a couple times a year and I will wait and then on those days I go through those links and just grab all of those articles at once because I have the time to be a patient genealogist like that. Ancestry does that kind of thing too where they'll open up some of their records at different times but it's hard because you have to stay on top of it and obviously that does limit your research. You know newspapers.com is almost because it's really one kind of document I can do lots of different searches, but it's it's easier to make lists like that in newspapers.com. It would be hard to constantly be listing records in Ancestry that I didn't have access to, especially if you don't have access to the search. <clears throat> Sorry, I hope that all makes sense. Um, now, what Ancestry has... Oh, I didn't bring my tea in. Cups of, cups of orphan abandoned tea all over my house, you guys. <clears throat> what Ancestry has going for it is that a lot of people are using Ancestry to build family trees. So there's tons of these little private family trees people are putting together. Uh, now the thing about Ancestry, I, they had, had a commercial, it was a while ago, they had a commercial where they talked about all the names that have been added to family trees. And it was like, oh, we have, you know, 30 billion names or something like that compared to like the other sites. And that, I yes, I don't think that they were lying, but because it's a whole bunch of family trees that people are starting, there's a lot of, you know, that name's going to be in a lot of different family trees. So it's not really like 30 billion separate people, um, which makes it different than family search. And we'll talk about that in a second. But Ancestry does have a lot of those private trees, depending, or I'm sorry, um, trees that people have put together. And depending on where they've put their uh, privacy settings, the trees might be private or public. I have, you don't always want to just take information from somebody's tree at face value because there are a lot of people on Ancestry who don't know what they're doing, not through any fault, but who are just connecting people and not necessarily checking records correctly. Um, but people's trees can be really helpful because that's like a, um, you know, the trees and the little, the, the shaky leaves, the hints that come up on Ancestry, they're just a prompt that's, that's a little toehold to you know, encourage you to look into that and to see whether or not that's a, um, that's somewhere that you should put your energy as far as like, uh, what am I trying to say, you guys? Man, all of a sudden the Friday feels like a Friday. How Friday am I? Um, it's just a boost. Okay. It's just another, it's another piece of data that somebody else has connected these people on a tree is a piece of data. Is it a correct piece of data? That's for you to figure out as you follow that up with research, but it, it, it can be helpful. I have gotten a lot of leads from looking at other people's trees. Um, and it's fun sometimes to do the detective work yourself and figure out, you know, this person that thinks that they've connected themselves to, um, 
everybody's connected to Julius Caesar. And every now and then when I go into like the ancestry trees and you can see that they've gone all the way back to Julius Caesar, I'm like, this will be fun. Let me figure out exactly where I can untangle this. Um, now, ancestry has DNA. That's the other thing. That's the other way that they're getting people onto the site and way that people are using the site. And I really like Ancestry's DNA features. If you've taken an Ancestry DNA test, you can connect that to your Ancestry profile. Um, and it will, it'll show you your DNA matches, but then there's tools in there where you can actually, you know, kind of connect your DNA test to your tree. That tells Ancestry, it just gives Ancestry more information to make more connections. <coughs> so Ancestry is pretty good at suggesting relatives for you and suggesting how they can, um, like how they may be related to you, how you can figure out what your common ancestor is. It's a lot of fun. It's not perfect. It depends a lot on whether or not people have made their trees public, how many relatives have added to their tree. <clears throat> you know, I don't, we've talked about DNA a little bit, but you can have a certain amount of matching centimorgans with somebody and that could mean a whole variety of different possible relationships looking just looking at DNA because as your family tree kind of fans out I guess you're going to share like the same percentage with maybe this level of cousin that you would with this level of aunt etc but um, because they combine what they have done with their DNA database with people's private people the family trees people are putting together I need to stop saying private because they're not private family trees obviously unless somebody has set them to private but I mean, um, you know, these user constructed family trees, uh, Ancestry's DNA tree mapping services are getting more sophisticated by the day because as more people put their information in, it's just a wider pool of data that Ancestry can pull from. That is probably Ancestry's biggest strength, if I was going to say. Not just that they have DNA, but that Ancestry is such an attractive place for people to start that they do get a lot of users who are jumping in and adding some information. So, you know, if you were gonna just look at how many cousins can I find? When I did, I've done DNA tests through 23andMe and through Ancestry, and I had a lot, many more matches through Ancestry just because there are more people on there. Um, so that's a big plus for Ancestry. However, don't be under the mistaken idea as I was for a long time that Ancestry is really just dominating and leaving the other three um, websites in the dust. That's not true, especially when it comes to, I think Ancestry kind of has this appearance, like because they're so large, they must have so many more records than the other, um, the other three of the big four sites. It's not true. And I I think that that's a combination of just assumption because people are so many people are using Ancestry, but I think it's also a marketing thing. I think that Ancestry has done incredible marketing, two thumbs up to their marketing team, two thumbs up to the fact that they make it really easy to learn how to use Ancestry.com, and it all sort of creates this illusion that Ancestry must have more records, like many more records than these other sites. The four websites, like if I if you were going to actually lay out numbers, I don't know what the numbers are today. I guess I could have looked that up. I bet you Ancestry is in the lead, but I bet you they're only in the lead by a little bit because the other ones are trying really hard to be really co uh, competitive. And the easiest way to be competitive for a genealogy website is to have records, not only to have a ton of records, but to have records that the other people don't have. So, and you, p these websites are getting records, you know, when they're getting this church record from Norway, this set of family histories from this place in China, um, you know, all of these documents from this little county in Iowa, it, uh, these companies have people who work for them who have to go out and they make contracts with each of these um, places that have these records. And either they make a contract to buy the record so that then the record belongs to that company, or as is more common, they make a contract to scan the record and have it be available to their members. Um, and you just, you get places that have taken their records and then they have a contract with all four of the sites. And then you get some, and we'll talk about the geography, about like, you know, records in certain places. You'll have, there'll be more of the records in that place on a certain site. I mean, it just kind of makes sense. Like where is their ge uh, geographical focus gonna be? Because people, you know, physically have to get the record 
somehow or get it scanned and they have to make contact with all these different places and have all these contracts. So, um, it's the, the diversity of record types and how they're getting them and where they're getting them from is astonishing. And when you look at the big four, uh, the companies are just sort of putting their energy in different places. Ancestry, um, if I was going to say where are most of Ancestry's records from, Ancestry has great American records. Ancestry has a lot of international records. They're pretty heavy on U.S. records. Uh, they, I think they used to have a reputation for having like the, a lot of the English speaking country records, you know, um, well, English speaking country is not fair. I guess they had, you know, U.S., Canadian, uh, Britain, Ireland, Scotland. I think that that when I first started using Ancestry, which I guess would have been about 10 years ago, they really pushed a lot of marketing saying that they had those records. I think that they're getting more global, but they're not quite there. I wouldn't say that Ancestry is the best place for if you truly want global records. But again, Ancestry's putting a lot of money into it. They're definitely getting competitive. Um, and if you wanted to learn how to use Ancestry, so I should talk about that too. Because that's the other thing is you don't want to pay for a subscription and then get on there and feel like everybody else knows how to use this thing, but you don't. And it's making you feel stupid and now you're mad at it because they took your money and you don't know what you're doing. And you keep searching for things by just using this search bar and you're not finding anything. And the website sucks and Carly told you to get this, so Carly sucks and you're not going to do genealogy anymore. I mean, don't go down that rabbit hole with all of these if you, as you start using them. I am 100% one of those people like... Don't buy the appliance and throw away the instruction manual. Don't get the furniture from Ikea and throw away the thing that tells you how to put the 400 pieces together. If you were to go and get an Ancestry.com subscription today, look at their blog. <clears throat> Watch the videos on their YouTube channel. And yes, Ancestry.com has their own YouTube channel just for teaching people how to use Ancestry.com. They even have this thing called Ancestry Academy where you can pay um, for classes. Uh, it's their classes on genealogy, but obviously, <clears throat> so sorry, I really, if I knew where my tea was, I would go and get it. Um, the Ancestry Academy classes are, of course, focused on using Ancestry.com, but they, they're they good if you're just interested in learning how to do genealogy better. I've actually only ever seen one. I don't pay for Ancestry Academy right now. It's a separate thing. Uh, but I've heard great things about them, and I know some of the people that teach in them, and they're good instructors. Okay. So let's let's switch from talking about <laughs> all the different ways you can give Ancestry money through Ancestry.com, through Newspapers.com, through the DNA test, through Ancestry Academy. Uh, let's let's totally switch hats and talk about Family Search because Family Search out of the big four, Family Search is the free one, and so Family Search is a natural place for people to start because you don't have to make any kind of investment. You just have to make a profile, uh, or I guess. Is it a profile? I mean, you need, you need a username. You need to sign up for free at Family Search. Uh, you can't just use it without logging in. But Family Search, they probably lag a little bit behind as far as how many records they've collected. But believe me, Family Search is on top of it. Family Search is trying really hard to get records from everywhere. And I mean everywhere. So here's the thing. If I was going to say that out of the big four, who dominates as far as being globally, like it doesn't matter where you're looking, they bet you they have a record for somewhere in that general area. That's going to be Family Search because Family Search is really taking a worldwide approach to genealogy. Now, the so there's things about Family Search that set it apart from the um, the other three that are pretty major. One, of course, being that they're free, that it's free. The other one is that Family Search is the only one that has a one tree model. So on all of the other three sites, you set up a profile, you start building a tree, it's your tree, you're in charge of it. It's the equivalent of in elementary school, you had a poster board, you wrote on the poster board, you glued your pictures on. If another kid had wandered up, ripped a picture down, or like crossed out your name and put somebody else's name, that kid would have gone to the principal's office. You know, like everybody would have recognized that a social faux pas had just happened in the third grade classroom. Uh, Family Search is the ultimate class project. Family Search, there's one piece of poster board and 30 children and everybody has a marker and a glue stick. 
The great thing about that is that the tree gets built quickly and it's beautiful and everybody's working on it. The bad thing about it is that you've always got that one kid with the marker and the glue stick who doesn't know what they're doing. And suddenly the entire thing's a hot mess. I have issues with the hot mess that the one public tree can be when somebody gets in there and they change things and they don't know what they're doing. However, it's a little bit self correcting just because if you're annoyed that somebody has gone in and messed up a couple of your ancestors, there's a pretty good chance that you're not the only person who's annoyed by that. And so people will go in and mess things up, but then you have an equally likely chance that somebody else after them is going to go in and fix it before you even notice. Um, and people do make duplicate people all the time. So you're supposed to, in theory, on the one tree model, each human has like one profile, one ID number. And so when you add your ancestors, you're supposed to sort of find them and then connect to that person and say, okay, so this is my fourth great grandparent. People don't know how to do that. And so they make duplicate people all the time. So you just, you wouldn't start out by trying to do that in order to avoid using the one tree model. It wouldn't make any sense for you to intentionally make a bunch of duplicate people because you're trying to have your own private tree because people will just wander over to your tree and fix it by connecting people or by adding things. Um, so if you were going to have just one place that you were trying to organize your family tree so that nobody touched it, family search is definitely not for you. But again, I would actually say don't, and this is just me, this isn't even me trying to sell pages, but I would not have the only place your family history research lives be on any of these sites. And I'm, again, obviously I'm a fan of Ancestry. Ancestry, out of all of these, I've been a subscriber pretty much nonstop to Ancestry, I've used them forever. The problem with having Ancestry be the only place that my family history lives is one, somebody else would have to log in to access it if something happened to me too. It's really, it's kind of hard to share because then you've got to drag people over to the computer and log in and have them look at your tree that way. And then three, what if something happens to my account? What if somebody hacks it or Ancestry randomly goes under, which they're not going to, but you know, or Ancestry freaks out and just deletes my profile and all of my work is suddenly gone. This is why you guys, you got to have your own notebook. You got to be filling out your pages using whatever you're learning on these four sites printing that out and then having those in your hot little hands you have to own your family history do not spend years of your life putting together a family history that you put some other website in charge of ancestry should not be the steward of all of your work that's what i'm saying so family search in the same sense like i use family search as a way to supplement the research that I'm doing and to take facts that I learned from family search and to find documents and find photos and transfer them to my digital notebook and print them out. I don't just leave it on family search. And if you left it on family search and that was the only place that you're leaving it and then somebody came in and changed it, yes, obviously that would be really frustrating, especially if you knew that you were correct. Um, the other thing about family search that um, I hope, you know what? I need to know what time it is. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to walk you around my house for a second. The other thing about family search that sets them apart is the religious affiliation. Oh, okay. I'm fine. I'm sorry. I have a, a appointment later on today. I just didn't want to, um, but I still have about a half hour. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You're walking around my dark house. Um, so family search is part of the LDS church, the Mormon church. That is who owns Family Search. That is who pays for it. That is who pays for the records. That's who has the missionaries who are going out to find records and they employ the people that are, you know, building the website. It's all the Mormon Church. Some people de facto have an issue with that. I won't go into, I don't know, the ethics or if you have personal feelings about that one way or the other, that is your business. Um, but. I would never want you to feel deceived if you put a lot of time into family search and you didn't realize that there was a religious affiliation. I also, I don't know how likely that would be. It's, it's hard to spend any time on family search and not realize that it's part of the Mormon church just because of the way their website is created. And if you spend any time looking at their marketing materials or, um, like the things that they put out, it, you, it, even Roots Tech, like it would, it would be hard to go to Roots Tech, which is their conference, and not notice that there was like a whole track for people who are LDS. Um, 
but I do feel like occasionally people, I don't, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh. I feel like occasionally people are blindsided by that. And maybe it's because I live in Salt Lake City that I'm just like, how did you not notice? Like, that site is super Mormon. Um, but yeah, they're not hiding it either. They're not, they're definitely not trying to trick people. Family Search wants you to know that they're Mormon. Uh, and they definitely would like to talk to you about that if you have any kind of interest. So they are putting that information out there like a lot. Um, now, Family Search doesn't have DNA. They don't have DNA testing and they don't have a place to put your DNA. They just don't. I don't know if they'll incorporate that later. I can see why they don't. So again, I don't want to get too far into it. I'm not a member of the LDS church. I certainly couldn't speak to, you know, hidden church motives behind family search, which again, are not hidden at all. If you spend like 30 seconds at the family research library or the family history library. Um, but they, they have certain, uh, religious beliefs that really encourage them to find these family connections, to find their research, to make, to add to the tree and, you know, grow that. I don't know where DNA fits into that. Um, so I'm not sure if there's even an interest in incorporating DNA. I mean, I'm sure that it's come up, but nothing I've heard suggests that they're going to be bringing a lot of DNA stuff into their website. So if you're really interested in DNA and finding DNA cousins, uh, not great. Finding cousins through family search is super easy, but only if you are putting in the information yourself. That's where my husband found out that he was related to Teddy Roosevelt. There's something like eighth cousins, four times removed or something. I think that was the greatest moment of my husband's life. Um, I also don't think family search is super easy to navigate. It's reasonably easy to just do a basic search on family search and to figure out and to find these people's profiles and see all their kids and their spouses and things like that. It's relatively easy. Finding the little pockets of records that family search has collected, especially the ones that haven't completely been, you know, they, they haven't been gone through and, um, oh my gosh, you guys, I don't have any words today. Whatever the word is for when they go through the record and they pull out each individual name and make it easy for you to just do a blanket search and find that record. They haven't done that with all of their records because they're constantly getting new records. Um, it really helps if you know where to look on family search and they have this thing called the family search wiki, which is gigantic. It's more than, it's like 90,000 articles. And it's so helpful, <clears throat> but it's so big. So, and I actually don't, Family Search has put out videos. The wiki itself has help articles, but it's one of those things where I have never seen the help article really that specifically and in a nice way explains how to use the Family Search wiki. They need like a, a help for the help. Um, I've gotten used to the family search wiki, but only because I've spent so much time on it. So it's one of those things. It's fun. There's a ton of stuff on there. Dig around. Um, one more thing about family search before I move on. So family search has contracts just like all four of them and the contracts, uh, you know, are which each with each repository, for example, they have a contract with Cook County so that they can have Chicago area records. Well, what happens is the contracts are for a limited amount of time, so they have to renew them to keep offering that record. <clears throat> so you could have a record that you had access to and then suddenly you don't have access to on Family Search. That's true for um, all of these places, but for Family Search, for whatever reason, I don't know if the contracts are shorter, I've had more disruptions where suddenly I couldn't access something, which is another reason that you should be saving images and putting things in your notebook because you could save a record to your files or to the tree or whatever and have it not be there the next time you log in. Um, the thing about family search is that it's also, the contracts aren't um, universal in the sense that they, it doesn't just mean either they have a contract for full access for everybody or a contract with, or they don't have a contract. Some of their contracts only give access to people who are LDS. That is a, as the two big complaints I hear about family search is that people don't like the big tree model and people don't like that if you're not Mormon, you don't get to have as much access because it feels like that's not fair and it's not even like you can upgrade to being a Mormon. I mean, I guess spiritually you could upgrade to being a Mormon if you converted, but that's obviously like, that would be genealogical overkill if that's your only um, motivation. But 
you really like, it can feel like you're being excluded. As somebody who's not Mormon, I completely get that. Um, there's reasons for that. It's their, it's their prerogative. Some of that means that if you go to the Family History Library, which again, I'm lucky enough to live in Salt Lake City, so when there's not a pandemic, I can do that. Sometimes you can get access to those records actually in place. There are family history uh, research centers all over. Uh, there's definitely one near you. I don't care where you are. The LDS Church has put a family history research center by you. Um, but again, with the pandemic, you maybe can't access to it. I, I know people who are actually driving to parking lots and parking outside the ward buildings where the, the fam their local family history library is and getting on the Wi-Fi so that they can access some of these records. Uh, I think that that's brilliant. I know people who spent all summer doing research in their cars on their laptops in the parking lots of wards and they would, you know, tell them, can you turn on the Wi-Fi or make sure the Wi-Fi is on? And they're happy to, well, the people that I talked to said that the wards were happy to do that. It's just with the pandemic, they can't let you in. But, um, but yeah, some, some of the records, even if you go to the family history library, you just can't get in unless you have, they have a number, they have like an ID number that they actually log in as a member of the LDS church. Um, so just know that that's a thing. I can't, there's no workaround I can give you for that. Uh, it just is what it is. Okay, now let's talk about the other two because I feel like depending on where you live, maybe these are the ones that you haven't even considered using or maybe these are what you use all the time and you don't know why I spent so much time talking about ancestry and family search. So find my past. When I first heard about find my past, the person that was talking to me said, oh yeah, there's find my past, but you wouldn't use that unless you're British. I carried that for years and I don't even think I looked into find my past. And I kind of feel bad about that because... Family Past has records that the other sites don't have. Um, however, Find My Past does, even though they are continuing to be competitive and they have records from all over, they, as of right now, I can say, Find My Past is really pretty focused. England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, um, Canada, Australia, and the United States, they are dominant geographic places as far as the Find My Past collection, but they're going to have different records. They do have different records than um, some of the other sites. So if you have a lot of family in those areas, even if you've done a lot of research in the other sites, Find My Past might have records that you don't, um, you don't have. Uh, now, you can't, the site doesn't work in any language besides English. So if English isn't your first language and that's frustrating, then Find My Past is not for you. I don't know if they're working on that or not. Um, they also, they have DNA, but it's like not, I mean, Family Search doesn't have any DNA. That's the only reason that Find My Past is ahead of them in DNA, but DNA is also not why you would use Find My Past, but they're working on it. So I think that that's probably going to get better. Um, and Find My Past has a blog. They have help articles to help you learn how to use the site, but it's kind of straightforward. It's there's nothing really tricky about Find My Past. I wouldn't call it easier to use than the other sites, but it's it's not harder either. Uh, just know that Find My Past has put a lot of money into getting records and that they have nearly as many records as Ancestry.com. It's just that their records are kind of focused in that the English-speaking... I keep saying English-speaking. I feel like that's offensive. It's not like other countries don't speak English. I hope you know what I mean. Um... But yeah, that's the deal with Find My Past. Now, I haven't, I, out of all of them, I've used Find My Past the least. I have had successes there, but it's one of the ones where I do let the subscription lapse because Find My Past, like all of these, all of these have different times where you can have free access because they're trying to get you in. Um, and I do kind of wait for free access time to use Find My Past, but I paid for Find My Past before. Uh, and if I was, if I had a lot of, I don't have a ton of British history in my family tree. If I had a ton of British history and it was more recent, or Ireland or Scotland, I think Find My Past might actually, it could even be the dominant one that I put most of my subscription money towards. Um, and I'm going to move on quickly. I'm sorry, I felt like, I feel like I talked for so long about the other ones, but now I feel like this video is getting too long, so I'm just going to move on. Uh, so the last one I want to talk about is My Heritage. So My Heritage is a company that's based in Israel, but they have records from all over. Um, they have a lot of European records not just England. They have a lot of Scandinavian records. They've got German records. Um, so if I was going to say, where's the geographic focus for my heritage, I would say there's a ton of European records. They also have a lot of South American records. Um, they have records from Israel, where they are from, 
but or like we you know where they operate, but it's not, it's not like dominant. Um, you know, they just have records from there. The thing that my heritage, my heritage has a couple things to set it apart. My heritage has their own DNA test, but they also, my heritage out of these four, that's where you can upload a DNA test that you've taken somewhere else. So you might not know this, but when you take like an ancestry.com DNA test or you take a 23andMe uh, or one of the other ones, you can download your results. I, oh, I can't remember what the file name is called. That would be a good thing for me to know, but you download it. It's a little thing that sits in your computer for a second, and then you can upload it to MyHeritage. And it's exactly the same as if you took a MyHeritage DNA test. So if you have another test, there's no reason to pay for a MyHeritage DNA test. Um, and they will tell you that. They are interested in building out their DNA population, the people that have uploaded or that have taken DNA tests. They don't care where you took it. Your DNA hasn't changed between the time that you did it with 23andMe and you considering buying a MyHeritage test. Um, so because of that, their DNA population or the, their, their database, I would say is not as big as Ancestry's, but it's growing and it's growing really quickly because as people figure out that this is something that you can do and you can actually do that for free. Now, if you have a free membership on MyHeritage, uh, you're limited, but you can build a tree of like, I wanna say like 200 people. It's kind of a lot. So my heritage wants you to get on there and make an account and start building stuff and get used to it before you even pay for them for a subscription, which is great because my heritage has a lot of free um, resources you can use and things that you can use. And part of that is that you can upload a DNA test and start connecting. Um, the other thing my heritage has gotten really competitive about is my heritage has photo correcting tools that are super fun and surprisingly good. And they keep tweaking them. Sometimes they look kind of fake and I'm like, that's not an improvement over what I just uploaded. But they have the really popular one from last year was that they had this color, they have a colorization tool where you can upload these black and white photos and then it adds color based on like, you know, the different shades of gray and stuff. It's actually pretty accurate. It's really cool. I colorized a lot of, and you can do it. I think that it's just free. And then it saves the, it sort of saves it as a filter on top of the ori original image. So if you wanna save that colorized image, then you can download it to your computer and it'll download the new colorized image. But like when you upload a black and white photo to MyHeritage, um, the black and white photo like still stays the same. And when you colorize it, it's just a colorization filter on top. So <coughs> if you wanted to keep the colorized version, you should download it yourself. When you upload photos, it's not like it's Google or something. It's not like the photos then go into some public database. Like you retain control, they're your photos. So um, it's up to you if you wanted to make them public on MyHeritage. So you could just privately upload a bunch of colors, a bunch of colors, a bunch of photos and colorize them. Um, they also have a thing for sharpening. They have a thing for, and it doesn't have to be black and white. Now when you've, get, you've got um, photos that are faded, I don't know for those of you who saw my, my gigantic polo on photos, ink and photos can fade over time. So then you get photos that are too yellow or photos that are too red, depending on when the, the photo print was created. Um, my heritage can fix that. And that's actually also pretty accurate. Sometimes you need to mess with it a little bit, but um, it'll try to bring it back to what the image originally looked like. And the sharpening, you know, again, if your photo is super blurry, it's not a magic website, but the sharpening on uh, my heritage for bringing out features and stuff, especially in pictures of people, it's impressive. And it's the photo sizes, they're pretty big. You could colorize and sharpen something and have it be suitable for printing on MyHeritage if your original file was big enough. That's, I mean, I think that that sets MyHeritage way apart as far as um, usability because, you know, we use genealogy. I use genealogy and family history interchangeably. Genealogy for a lot of people is specifically genetics. It's the, it's the tree. It's the tree of science. You know, this person came from these two biological entities and each of those biological entities came from these two bio. And so for a lot of people, that's genealogy and family history is more the squishy. This person enjoyed living here and she wore this dress and she was, you know, very young when she got married. That's family history. I think those two terms are really being conflated a lot more often. And I think that that's great. I think that there's a lot more to genealogy than just that you're genetically uh, related to somebody. And I think that including things like photo colorization for my heritage, that's part of that family search. Sorry to go back to the ones I already talked about for a long time, but 
FamilySearch has a, a lot of tools that let you add audio to somebody's file. So you can upload an interview with them or a recording of their voice or a recording of your voice talking about somebody. And then because it's on the one tree model, you know, in the future, somebody can come across that and not only like see these photos that you shared of an ancestor, but actually be able to hear their voice. I love that. I just think that that's so rich. Like what a great way to humanize these people that we are um, related to. So, um, okay. Well, I've talked forever. I, am I late yet? Hold on. I'm almost late. Um, I've talked forever and I don't want to keep you guys any longer. I thank you guys for hanging in for me, uh, with me that have. Um, but I hope that that was helpful. Again, all of the ones that require payment have free days. They do not announce them though, because obviously they don't want everybody to wait until the free day. Some of them have some things that you can do. Okay. Mostly my heritage has things you can do without a paid membership. Ancestry DNA will let you take a DNA test, obviously, and get results. Well, I mean, you have to pay for the DNA test, and then you get limited access to that part of Ancestry, but you will still have to have a membership if you want to turn around and build a tree. Um, yeah, there's just pros and cons for each of them. There's a lot of, I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube from people using them, and I've learned a lot that way, but if you were going to put down the money, I would say make sure that you've got the time to teach yourself how to use whatever you're, you've just paid for and signed up for, or even family search. Don't be overwhelmed by the Family Search Wiki. It's amazing. I just want them to organize it better. I want them to get one of the bazillion missionaries to put together a really easy spoon-fed way to use Family Search because I do think that they're kind of missing that component. That's the problem is that the Family History Library, even when you walk in, there's people that are happy to like walk you around and kind of help you, but it's so overwhelming. And the people that are familiar with it, I think that it's kind of like people who are fluent in any language. I think that they they can easily forget and lose touch with how overwhelming it is when you're just starting out and how easy it would be to feel pushed out of it because you don't know enough. Um, and I never want people to feel like that because genealogy, we've talked about this, genealogy is the best and everybody has a right to know where they came from if they want to you shouldn't have to have a degree in it to be able to like enjoy doing research or to be able to say that you're doing valid research. So tiny soapbox, tiny Friday soapbox. Um, okay. Well, I have to go get ready for the rest of my day. Thank you for listening to, you know, nine hours of website comparison in the future. I will only do one website at a time, but I hope that was helpful. If you have any tips, I should have said this in the beginning before people got bored and left. If you have any tips for any of this, make sure you leave them in the comments because people read the comments and I guarantee at least one person who's watching this video is feeling that overwhelm. If you can do anything to stop the overwhelm for somebody else today, that would be an awesome act of kindness. I would like that very much. Anyway, all right, enjoy your weekend. I will be back on Monday. Thanks, guys.